afternoon all. Now it's not a bad afternoon and since I've got the uh, Muppet MPPT test rig out in the garden I thought I'd put a scope across the diode in the buck converter to see what's happening at this point here between the MOSFET and the inductor and it's quite interesting. Let's just go through this. At 100% pulse width modulation the MOSFET is 100% on, the solar panel voltage here is being pulled down through the MOSFET and the inductor to the battery voltage. So it's all DC, it's all stable. And on the scope we have a DC line, now what's that, 8 volts per division, so it's at about 12 volts, that makes sense. So now I'm going to put it at the maximum power point and it's at about 80% PWM, at 100% 24 watts. 80% 27 watts go any further and it drops away rapidly in fact it's about between 70 and 80 so what you get there is this same uh, on line where the MOSFET is on it's grown a bit it's risen in voltage a bit it's about 16 volts now and that's because the solar panel voltage has crept up to 16 volts in fact we can see that there it's 15.5 that's what the buck converter does. But then when the MOSFET turns off, that top end of the diode goes down to zero volts. In fact, it goes ever so slightly negative. So what's happening here is that the EMF on the across the uh, inductor flips round and pushes this point here, which is effectively open circuit now because the MOSFET is off, pushes this point down to ground and slightly below it at which point the diode conducts and then the back end of the uh, inductor pushes all its charge into the battery. Now of course this is all happening very rapidly, the scope saying 15 kilohertz. But now let's turn the pulse width modulation or the pulse width uh, down lower and see what happens on the scope. I'm at 60% now and suddenly it breaks up and it, uh, I'm at 50% now, and there's this sort of damped oscillation. So I'm wondering whether a larger inductor would help this, so that it stores more charge. Now I could go to a higher frequency, and in fact there's a good reason to go to a higher frequency, because people have been saying that they can hear the 15 kilohertz coming out of this inductor. But I think... Um, a larger inductor would help in any case. I think I'll probably do both. But I'm just wondering whether that is something to do with it running in discontinuous mode. Now this small inductor doesn't really matter at the maximum power point for a 36 cell solar panel because it's here 75% and there we're getting continuous mode on the inductor. But I seem to remember when I had uh, 72 cells of solar panel. When I took, put two solar panels in series, I was much further down, down around here I think, 50-40%, and that's where it goes discontinuous. And I seem to remember that on the display, the efficiency percentage, which at the moment is reading 100%, it's slightly awkward to see because that 7 at the end shouldn't be a 7, something's gone funny with the display. Um, I seem to remember that it was much, much lower. So a bigger inductor, I think, would probably fix that. I've ordered uh, a new ferrite, and I'll get some um, enameled copper wire, thicker stuff, and wind a new inductor for this. Yes, I'm now fairly convinced that I do need a bigger inductor, because this first marker line, this point here where the line drops low, that's where the MOSFET disconnects. This second marker line is where the MOSFET reconnects. I've set this to 50% mark space, so this period is the same as this period. So this arbitrary point here is where the inductor just runs out of magnetic charge, I suppose you could call it, and that sets off this ringing. So a bigger inductor, I'm certain, would stop this happening. Now there's a whole bunch of other stuff that needs to be done to this. I want to get rid of this 9 volt battery, it's just uh, out of place really. So possibly I'll set up a charge pump using um, a couple of the unused digital pins, but it looks to me like I'm going to have to move the display. 
because I need uh, for fast PWM mode, no it wasn't, it was phase correct PWM mode, I need uh, digital 9 and 10 which currently I'm using for the display so I think I'll shift the display down to the lower digital pins um, or I did consider using uh, a bootstrap but that would only work if the uh, buck converter is actually somewhere between I don't know a few percent and under a hundred percent if it ever went to a hundred percent the bootstrap would stop running and there is a condition where you might want to be at a hundred percent PWM it um, doesn't do anything useful in terms of MPPT but what it would do is allow you to compare the watts going into the battery using MPPT with what's going into the battery when there is no MPPT and therefore it can calculate the percentage gain you're getting uh, from the MPPT mechanism and I was going to put that under manual control so that you'd press some sort of button uh, not the reset button obviously but you'd press a button it would go to a hundred percent take a reading then go back to maximum power and compare the two readings and give you a an instantaneous view of uh, how much energy gain you're getting. But probably the first thing I need to do is to include the code I wrote for the, uh, well, a modified version of the code I wrote for the Arduino PWM solar charge controller so that this thing becomes a charge controller and doesn't rely on having a bulb connected to it to um, pull the voltage down and so that it will actually uh, stop the battery going over voltage. And of course this uh, ringing is not good from the point of view of radio frequency interference because if I stretch that out, uh, what's that, two microseconds per division, that's about one cycle. So it's ringing, it's oscillating at about 500 kilohertz. That's going to act as a radio transmitter. So there it is, that's the current state of the uh, Muppet MPPT, or what am I calling it now, Ardu MPPT solar charge controller. Um, day in the garden but uh, not a particularly sunny day. I tell you I'm moving to Spain. I am. I'm serious. I'm moving to Spain.